Well, it's so good to see you this morning. God is good. The presence of God is just here. Hallelujah. Jesus is in the house. Hallelujah. Jesus is in the house. Praise the Lord. Oh, well, I'm so glad and so privileged to be here with you this morning today. And this morning, uh, we're going to be starting a, a new series where we're going to be focusing specifically on what Jesus said, the Jesus quotes, the, what Jesus said in the Bible. I don't know about your Bible, but in my Bible, every time Jesus spoke, it's in the letters, in red letters. And is that in the same for everyone else's Bible? In my Bible, it's red letters. So over the next few weeks, uh, we're going to be looking at this new series called the Red Letter Series. So I've got a question for you this morning. I want to start with a question. And this morning, the question is this. Who or what has first place in your life? Let me say that again. Who or what has first place in your life right now, today? Jesus. Amen. Well, right now in the UK, right now in the UK, the cost of living has gone up. Nurses are striking. Doctors are striking. Train drivers, pilots, school teachers, they're all striking for more pay just to live. And they deserve that. Interest rates have gone up. Energy prices have gone up. Food prices have, have gone up. So let me ask you a question again today. Who has first place in your life today. You know, without God in your life, you may be worried right now or anxious about where the next meal is going to be coming from or how to pay the next energy bill. Well, this morning I want to show you in the Word of God that when the kingdom of God is first place of, in your life, our God promises that there is no need uh, to worry as God has a supernatural supply for your life in every season. Hallelujah. And we're going to look at that this morning. Before I do that, I'm just going to pray. Father, I want to thank you for your word. It is living and powerful. It is sharper than a double-edged sword. And so I ask God, I ask Holy Spirit that you will help me today to communicate your powerful word in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, if you've got your Bibles, if you turn with me to Matthew 6, I'm going to read a few verses to you from Matthew 6. I'm going to read from verses 25 all the way down to 34. Are you ready? This is what my Bible says in red, the New King James Version. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. What you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the fields, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. So now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Verse 34, therefore, therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things, sufficient for the day in its own trouble. You see, here in this uh, passage, Jesus is preaching to the crowds uh, from the mountain. Uh, as we know, we know it as the Sermon on the Mount. And his focus, his message, his, his main points in this scripture that I've just read this morning is this. It is, do not worry. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and the Bible says, and all these things will be added to you. You know, the dictionary defines worry as this, to cause one to feel anxious or troubled about actual or potential problems. In other words, it's worrying about something that's happening and worrying about something that might happen. And those feelings cause uh, those that are worrying to feel anxious and to feel uh, troubled. And you know, it's a proven fact. It is a proven fact that worrying causes uh, negative thinking, which will affect your mood, uh, your appetite, and all your sleep, and even your sleep. Jesus said, therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you, sitting here today, are you not more valuable than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? Jesus is saying, he's using the birds as an analogy. Jesus is saying, look at the birds. Birds are not anxious. Birds are not worried. Birds, they're not thinking about where their next meal's coming from. Birds are up every day when the sun rises. And the, 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 when the sun rises, they begin to sing together in a beautiful chorus. Why? Because they know that God has supplied all their needs in every season. They have trees to nest in. They have the fruits on the trees. They have the worms to eat from the ground. They have lakes to drink from. They are free to go from tree to tree every day, every morning. And they don't stir up. They don't need to worry. Every morning, if you're up early, you will hear just how thankful that the birds are as they sing together in the trees. They trust and rely on God's supply every day. They don't worry about it. They just know it's going to be there. I might take that tree today. I might nest in that tree. I might fly to Africa and nest in a tree next season and have some mangoes. You know, birds don't worry. Yeah, birds don't worry. No one told the mango tree we were in an economic crisis. It just keeps producing fruit. Do you get what I'm saying this morning? I want you to know this morning that when the kingdom of God is first place in your life, God will supply all your needs, the Bible says. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. You know, the Bible says that Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Hallelujah. When, G when we find Jesus... When we accept Jesus and Jesus comes into our life, something amazing happens. We become citizens of heaven. We become sons and daughters of a king. We receive an inheritance that Jesus paid for upon the cross. We are sons and daughters. We're no longer a slave to sin. We are being born again, the son and daughter of a king. Hallelujah. And so when we belong to a king, the king has a kingdom. It is the kingdom of God. And we belong to a kingdom that has a king. Hallelujah. Are you with me? We are citizens of heaven. 
And when we belong to that kingdom, we have access to all the resources that are in that kingdom. The Bible says, seek seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. You don't have to worry about what to eat. You don't have to worry about what to wear. When the king and his kingdom are first placed in your life, you can trust the Father, our King, our God will provide. Hallelujah. And I'm going to show you that this morning. We've just read, do not worry about what to eat, what to wear. And I want to show you in the Bible this morning where God supplies those, all those things and more. Are you ready? And we see this in Exodus 16, when God supernaturally supplies food, water, and clothing. You know it very, very well. It's when one million Israelites were freed from Pharaoh, when Moses stood, kept going and stood before Pharaoh saying, release them, release them. The day came when Pharaoh released one million Israelites and Moses led them to the desert, the wilderness, The desert is the most harshest place for anyone to survive. Everybody knows when you get to the desert, you need to be prepared. You need water. You need the right clothing. You need shelter. Uh, But but God chose to to lead the Israelites into the desert, into a wilderness place. And something, something amazing happened in the wilderness. God supplied but first, the Israelites moaned and, and they complained that they'd been, they'd been began to wander around the desert into this harsh, hot place. Uh, they were carrying no food. They were carrying no water. They only had the clothes on their back. Uh, and they were saying to Moses, well, what are we going to do? We were better off. We've got nothing to drink. We were better off in Egypt. Even as slaves, we had an abundance. So Pharaoh, the righteous man, stands uh, before uh, God and brings the request, uh, the burden of the people. And we see uh, that God supplies everything that the one million Israelites needed in the desert. My Bible tells me that when they needed a drink in Numbers 20, that Moses struck the rock and a supernatural supply of water kept coming from that rock for 40 years. Hallelujah. Can Can you imagine that? going every day to a rock in the desert to get water every day to drink, to wash. It's so easy to read over. Yes, 40 years in the wilderness, but 40 years. Is there anybody under 40 here this morning? That's your whole lifetime that God is supplying in the desert. Hallelujah. So God supplied water in the desert for 40 years. And when they needed food, we know that God supplied every morning, there was bread on the ground. Every evening, there was quail flying down in the camp. So the morning they had the bread, a supernatural supply of manna from God, from the king who sent it from his kingdom. And in the evening, the quail, you know, quail is a delicacy. You know, God wants the best for us. Amen. God sent quail down in the camp at twilight in the evening for them to have a barbecue. (laughs) For 40 years, God supplied water from the rock, manna on the morning, quail in the evening. So what about the what about the food? Well, my Bible tells me in 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 My Bible tells me in Deuteronomy 29 and verse 5 uh, that for 40 years that their clothes never ever wore out. Can you imagine children being born in the wilderness in those 40 years as they grew, so did their clothes. (laughs) Their shoes never wore out. Deuteronomy 20 verse 5, for 40 years I led you through the wilderness. This is God speaking. Yet, your clothes and your sandals did not wear out. Hallelujah. Why? Because the king releases resources from the kingdom to the people. They didn't have to worry what to eat, what to wear, what to drink. They had a supernatural supply from the kingdom from the king. Hallelujah. Are you with me this morning? God 
supplies. And I want to encourage you with that this morning, with the, the state of our uh, economy. What's forecasted is not great news, but I want to bring you good news that whatever bad news is out there, we always have a supernatural supply from our king, who is our father, who releases the resources from his kingdom. Hallelujah. But there's something that you must do to receive that. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things, food, clothing, water, supernatural supply, will be added to you. Hallelujah. God knows we need somewhere to live. God knows we need somewhere uh, to, uh, something to drive, something to eat, something to wear. God knows all our needs and the king will supply. Hallelujah. Let me encourage you this morning. Let me go further this morning. We see in Matthew 14, verses 13 and 21, it's a story again that you know. But I want to remind you of the stories like the old guys did in the Bible in the past of God's provision. And I want you to leave here this morning encouraged that you know that whatever situation or circumstance that you might be in today, that when the king is first place in your life, the kingdom resources are available to you. Hallelujah. And we see in Matthew chapter 14, uh, when, uh, when the crowds, 5,000, are following Jesus. And uh, in verse 16, Jesus said to the disciples, listen, this is key. Jesus said to his disciples, they're hungry, what do you have? Now, Jesus knew for a fact that they didn't have nothing because they'd been traveling with him for days with the crowd. So why do you think Jesus said, what do you have? Because he wanted to teach them a lesson of that, that there is a supernatural supply when there seems to be nothing. And so Jesus calls for the crowd. He asked the disciples, is there any food here at all? He knew that there was. And a little boy comes forward with his packed lunch of five loaves and two fish. And you know the story. Jesus sat them down. The disciples took the basket round, and what happened is the multiplication, the miracle came through the disciples passing out the bread. Every time they dipped into the basket, it just never ended. It kept going, it kept going, it kept going. Why? Because the king and the kingdom released the resources, amen? Jesus was there. Jesus was teaching them that no matter how little it might look, if you trust and if you believe, there's always more. Hallelujah. And so Jesus feeds the 5,000, and we know at the end that they pick up 12 baskets of bread, which is far more than they ever started with. Hallelujah. Jesus is teaching them a lesson, and that was in Bethsidia. And as we look in the Bible, as we go now to near the region of the garrisons in Mark chapter 8, we see that Jesus does something uh, uh, very similar. He feeds 4,000 with seven loaves and a few small fish. And I want to tell you this morning that our God can do the same for you. And he's willing to do the same for you. But too often we run to everywhere else before we first go to God. It's God that we need to go first because as children and sons and daughters of the kingdom of God, the king wants to supply for you. I think, I think so often we don't give God the room to supply. We run to the nearest thing in panic rather than allowing God to break in. Yeah? yeah. Hear me. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. When the kingdom of God is first place in your life, God promises what all things will be added to you. What are all things? Where is the list of the all things? The all things is what you need, God will supply. Hallelujah. Because my Bible tells me that my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. And here it is. Uh, God promises to add all things to you. Hallelujah. Philippians 4.19. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what are your needs today, church? What are your needs? When you hear the news, are you worrying? 
When you hear what's on the radio, what's on the TV, what's in the papers, are you worrying? Well, I want to tell you this morning, the words that Jesus spoke from that mountain that day, do not worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, what you're going to drink, what you need, because God promises in the word of God this morning, he will supply all your needs. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that when Jesus came to seek and save the lost and we receive Jesus, and we do have access to all these things, has Jesus left us? No. Do you know where Jesus is? He's here in Romans 8.34. It says Jesus is now sitting at the right hand of the Father. In other words, he's sitting next to God, reminding them, interceding for us of, of who we are and what we need. Hallelujah. Jesus is right there for you. He's there for you, reminding the Father of you. Hallelujah. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Hallelujah. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God changes not. Hallelujah. The same God that supplied in the desert can supply for you right now in the 21st century. The same Jesus that multiplied the food can multiply your food in your cupboard, in your fridge. Hallelujah. He can do it. He's the same. We just need to, to have faith that God still is a miracle worker. He still can do these things. Hallelujah. He's willing. Hallelujah. I want you to know that this morning. I'm going to close because I want to keep this very, very simple. But if you've been struggling, I want to pray for you this morning. I want you to come out and let me pray for you. But if it is, I believe that you have a poverty spirit, I also want to pray for you. What is a poverty spirit? A poverty spirit is... The belief, the enemy, believing that the enemy who's getting inside your head, that God will never supply for you. He will never come through with you. you always be poor. You'll never have nothing. These are the lies of the devil who will try to get in your head and said, you're not worthy. Look at that sin you did all those months ago. Why would God supply? God's not going to supply you. Far from God. God shut you out. God's closed you off. This is, this is a lie from the devil who gets inside your head. It's a poverty spirit. And God wants you to have a kingdom mindset where you understand that when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that all things will be added to you, that there's a supernatural supply for you no matter what. Amen. So if you're struggling with a poverty spirit, I want to pray for you this morning. And we're going to get rid of that poverty spirit so that you can then again just step into the blessings of the kingdom resources today. Can we stand together? Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you that history shows and that your word says, Father God, that no matter what our situation or circumstances, that you will provide. We thank you, God, as we look to the bird that are singing every morning. Lord, how you supply for the birds. Lord, how you use this analogy, God, that, that, that you're going to supply for us every day. That, that every day we're going to get up like the birds and we're going to worship you. Like the birds singing, and we're going to thank you. And we're going to praise you in advance before we receive. Because we know that the word of God says, if we seek you first, the kingdom of God and your righteousness, that you will provide. And so, God, we thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh, that you that the promise is that you are our provider. And so, Lord, we thank you as we leave this place today that we know that we can look to you for a supernatural supply in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah.